Hey what's up guys, it's Kyle Brock here, I'm a surfer and a filmmaker and I want to chat about my experience riding both the PU Inferno 72 from Sharp Eye Surfboards and the Dark Arts uh, Inferno 72 from Sharp Eye Surfboards. Let's rip into it. How I got this board is uh, the Inferno 72 was the first winner of our um, greatest board test series that we did last year, the Everyday Surfers Board Test Series. And uh, Sharp Eye actually reached out and said, hey, just letting you know, um, you've, you've had a big impact on sales and we really appreciate it, bigger than Step in the Dark, mind you. <laughs> I don't know whether I wanna say that or not. Uh, is there anything that you would like? Like, can we get you anything or, or whatever? It was this really nice gesture. Um, so I actually just said, well, hey, yeah, I'd love to try uh, one of the dark arts boards because most people thought I was on a dark arts because it was sprayed black. It was actually just the PU sprayed black. Um, so about 12 months later, the board arrived. It was funny because there was so much hype around this board in my mind, um, I'd probably oversold it in my mind <laughs> and uh, took it out in the wave pool whilst I was coaching and just had a shocking session on it. First I thought, oh my God, they've sent me this $2,000 surfboard and I don't even like it, what am I gonna do? First rode this with the H4s. So the I think they're carbon fins, those funny Swiss fins. And initially, first thoughts were it was feeling a bit weird and slow. It actually felt slow when I was like, there's something wrong with this board. And then um, I swapped, actually busted one of the fins out, the H4s, uh, whilst riding the PU, and then uh, chucked these, just the basic performers in, and just found the board just came alive. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that was fins or me getting used to it, but yeah, just an interesting little changeover. But... I mean, if you had to ask me what I see as being the main differences here when you look at some of these clips, uh, there's not a whole lot going on. I mean, you could look at the sort of direction of spray, I'd say that's more of a term. This is actually the intermediate setting on the PU, so again, you've got to shave that back um, compared to the other settings here. All looking pretty similar, to be honest, in, in terms of um, performance, I'm not seeing a whole lot visually. I do know that in those little moments there, where you can sort of connect with the lip, the PU feels a little bit less sparky. And that's kind of the only difference. I mean, you could maybe say there's a touch more spray over here on the dark art side, but you'd be pushing it. For me, if you observe the sort of spray coming out of this turn, again, you're on a bigger wave over here, because we're on the advanced setting, um, but just watch that initial little zip of water that comes out that's the sort of stuff that i don't see a lot on the on the pu and there's other examples of that happening too even in the in the ocean
when I was in the pool, you could really feel it that this wanted to be on, this was on top of the water, you know, really alive and floaty on top of the water. That might be that, um, that EPS nature. And I also felt that during the turns, this, the dark arts wanted to crack the lip a little bit more. It seemed to be more lively off the top, especially in re-entries. In cutbacks, those top turns, it sort of feels quite similar. Um, but definitely in the re-entries, I can feel a lot more pop and crack out of the lip. Uh, definitely in the pool and also even, even out here too in the ocean. So what you're looking at when you look at the Dark Art Surfboards is that it's a, an EPS core, so it's an epoxy core, which means it's light uh, and also strong. And then it's vacuum wrapped uh, in carbon. So there's a carbon cloth, essentially, that they sort of roll over the surfboard, uh, glass it on, I think, or, or resin it on, whether that's the same thing or not. And then they vacuum bag it, they vacuum seal it, which pulls out any excess weight as well, pulls out some of that resin and uh, obviously creates a very um, tightly layered and strong sandwiched product uh, that's incredibly light. Before I'd received this, I was in Western Australia at uh, Taj Burrow's place and got to sort of um, handle a few of his um, surfboards from the Stab in the Dark series that he did. And they just look like flawless surfboards still, even after he'd sort of smashed them to bits um, or surfed them to bits. Uh, they didn't really have a whole lot of dents or anything almost. It was pretty incredible. And he was sort of saying that that's the big difference is that they just don't dent. They, they are going to last a really long time. And that may be um, the, the main difference <coughs> between the uh, Dark Arts and the, the PU is going to be the longevity of the surfboard. Uh, if you can have a surfboard that's going to last for four or five years uh, before the performance gets impacted, as opposed to with the PU, nine to 12 months, in my experience, um, that's how long a PU surfboard lasts before it starts to feel undercooked and feel a little bit less springy, at least in my experience. Um, then that's gonna be a really positive thing, environmentally, uh, financially, and for a whole host of other reasons. So I can see the same thing with this board. It's interesting with the black, uh, because it tends to heat up quite a lot, this surfboard. Uh, you can have it in the sun for like th two, two minutes, uh, wax up, before the wax starts just dripping off <laughs> the board. So that's always a bit of a downer. I actually would love to see, um, like John John was spraying his the top of his Dark Arts boards red, um, ostensibly to maybe keep that from happening, that sort of absorption of heat by the black colour, but I've also heard just as an aesthetic tool to make the board look better because sometimes black boards can look a little bit um, I don't know, not as, not as flavoursome, if, uh, if you will, as, as coloured surfboards. Uh, so that's something I'd like to see moving forward, is perhaps some different coloured options uh, with the carbon. The limitations on this, uh, it's, it is a very light surfboard. I was riding it out at sort of four to five foot, maybe a little bit bigger um, uh, snapper and I just I could barely hold my rail, I could barely hold turns, but I'm still running medium fins, I probably need some large fins for that sort of surf, but to be honest, I attribute that sort of limitation to the actual surfboard shape, because it's so alive in small waves, it's got that tail flick, it's got a sort of up and go sort of energy when it comes to uh, harnessing speed on a wave, um, or controlling speed rather, it's uh, not that good just because it's, it's so fast. So it, it is going to have limitations, it's not going to be magic in, in waves that are big, I find. It's always going to look a little bit um, average as well, which I found in Western Australia, and it's going to be hard to really surf through and commit to, and that's probably when you start needing a high performance shortboard anyway. quality of the board after quite a few surfs there's not even a, a dent on it which is probably the main um, feature of that that dark arts carbon wrap I'm loving it it's really cool my experience with the with the dark arts has been really positive uh, I'm really liking it I'm keeping it in the in the van I'm riding it in between twin fin shoots and stuff like that uh, it's definitely a go-to for me and I had some uh, I actually I surfed in a competition in it and I had a lot of comments about how um, zippy 
it looked. So uh, I, I would attribute most of that to the surfboard <laughs> as opposed to my surfing. Um, but in terms of whether I would, if I had to pay for this, obviously I, did, I didn't have to pay for this one. Um, if I had to buy that surfboard uh, or choose between that and a PU, I'd first want to be really confident in the shape of the PU that I'm buying. So because it was an Inferno 72, uh, arguably my favorite shortboard that I've ridden so far, um, I'm, I would have been happy to buy something like this because I know that it's going to last four or five years. So I think that's going to be the natural progression is people are going to buy a PU board and surf it for a year and go, hang on, this is a shape that I really enjoy. I'm going to see if I can get this in dark arts uh, so that it can last four or five years uh, and only be double the price. Um, so that's probably, I think, where it's going to go. Uh, and of course, with more abundance in the carbon wrap technology, the price may start to come down as well. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to see heaps of these litter littering the lineup uh, anytime soon, just due to the price tag. But I think that uh, they are going to be a really good option. Performance-wise, financially, eventually, um, environmentally, going to be a lot better. Even Kelly Slater says the best surfboard is the one that lasts. And I think these ones last. And you can just feel it in the construction. It's really cool. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Just a quick little one today. I will catch you guys soon. Eww.